start with uh, the name of the symposium and uh, reflect on the name because the name, uh, well, names have multiple meanings and uh, it's just a way for me to, to convey a few ideas. Uh, so how should we interpret exercise is, is medicine? There's multiple ways in which we can, we can do this. So one of them is that exercise is a medicine, is a medication, and that's perhaps the most obvious one. We wrote about this not too long ago um, uh, to reflect on this double um, or, or the multiple interpretations that the, the, the expression can have. And, and our conclusion was this, that yes and no. So exercise is medicine means that exercise could be thought of as a medication, but also that there are reasons not to think of it that way. Uh, yes, because exercise has a therapeutic effect in many, many uh, chronic conditions and other conditions, and that has been shown throughout this symposium. And so um, uh, in that sense, we can think of it in the same way that we can think of other therapies. It's perhaps no best example than, than, than neurodegenerative diseases. A wonderful report that came out not too long ago that we also summarized in, in another article in Publico, uh, where we can see how exercise plays this central role in preventing and care um, uh, dementia, Parkinson's, and other forms of, uh, of neurodegenerative diseases. And actually, it's perhaps the central feature of this lifestyle pattern that it's basically the best line of defense against uh, an increased number of, of, of patients with this disease. And I could talk, of course, about so many other conditions. Well, we had another slide, but so many other conditions, including, of course, diabetes uh, and depression that was talked about yesterday. And, uh, of course, cardiovascular diseases, brain, um, brain conditions, or, or I, I mean, uh, cerebral uh, vascular disease, uh, and so many others in which exercise has been proven to have uh, a, a, a critical role in, in, in primary, secondary, and third-year prevention as well. But, uh, but we also need to think of exercise differently than, than, than what a medication typically is. Um, physical activity is a complex behavior, uh, much more complex than taking a medication. Uh, we've heard this morning about the science of behavior change and how important, and in many panels we discussed how important it is that we think of the, the, uh, all the dimensions that human behavior entails, and, and for us to be successful in changing physical activity, this is unavoidable. There's wonderful projects going on, wonderful consortia going on, uh, highly funded. This is, a, this is funded by a common fund of NIH, uh, uh, a project named the Science of Behavior Change uh, we, that has one of the goals to identify the key mechanisms of action for behavior change and then having a number of projects that are sponsored, funded by this particular fund, uh, many of them around issues such as self-regulation, social processes, interpersonal, and stress, but many others are involved. So this just reminds us that um, when we think of prescribing exercise or promoting physical activity, we're dealing with a human behavior that is complex and that resists simpl simplification. And so uh, the science of behavior change is very welcome and very needed in this, in this process. Actually, it's not one behavior. It's a multitude of behaviors, which makes it uh, a lot more complicated. And so this is one, actually one of the critical messages that we like to, to convey, is that when we counsel for physical activity, uh, we're actually opening up uh, a box of many possibilities. And uh, it's important that people choose the ones that fit them the best. So again, it's not one behavior, it's many behaviors, and we need to understand uh, all the factors, all the self-regulatory factors that are uh, rel related to many of these. Also. It's a behavior determined, re determined by multiple sets of factors, by biological factors, which have no bearing in taking the medication, taking the medication, not its effect, by social factors, by psychological factors, of course, related to self-regulation, motivation, and others. Uh, but also, it's a behavior that takes place in, in very different contexts. We need to understand those contexts. Uh, and, of course, um, environmental determinants of physical activity are, are uh, an area that uh, is now being studied very intensely. Uh, and here are some of them. And, and so this, again, is, is very different than, what you, what, what, than the behavior of taking one medication. And we need to take that in, into account. And we heard a wonderful talk yesterday about some of these determinants. And just to uh, pay tribute to David, to David Val, um, we, we, we heard about many things, including things such as how transparent the buildings are, influences our physical activity. I tried to pick up the most esoteric of them. But the, the point is, there's many different influences that we need to take into account. And so that. Help, that uh, invites us to think of, of, of exercise not as a medication. Uh, also, being active is not just influenced by one's environment, it also influences one's environment. 
and in very important ways. And so when we prescribe physical activity, when we talk about it, we have to think, we, ha we now uh, can think also uh, in a way that that behavior influences our environment, influences our cities, our, 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 uh, uh, our physical and, and our, uh, well, the, uh, well, how sustainable our, our current environment can be. And the, when you think about the sustainable development goals, uh, you can also uh, think about how physical activity can impact many of those. And many of you have seen this before. Uh, we have made the point that promoting physical activity is a way from which countries can contribute at least to eight of those uh, planetary goals. So you can see that the, that the thinking of this as a medication is, is, is a bit off. Also, um, another interpretation is that prescribing exercise uh, is a medical act or should be seen as a medical act. Um, I wonder, well, what is prescribing uh, exercise? Yesterday, José Oliveira helped us through that and through all the factors that are necessary to uh, take into account when one prescribes an exercise, a session, an exercise program, uh, and then we, uh, we need to follow it, we, we need to uh, see uh, its outcomes. And these are the variables that enter into a personalized, detailed exercise prescription. And we are now in the process of writing a document that I'll, that I'll tell you in a, in, a, in a minute, a, a formal document from the, from the health ministry, where we are making a point of defining what exercise prescription is. And this is how we are defining it. And it's, it has been defined before, but it is something that is, uh, requires a level of, of, of time, of knowledge, of expertise uh, that uh, is not compatible with, uh, with all trainings and all contexts. And I'll say more about that. I wonder what you you would thought. We have the 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 Bolsonaro, the the World Nutritionistas here with us, uh, and I wonder what you would th think if I would propose that prescribing a diet or a dietary plan would be a medical act. No one would think of that seriously. So uh, the analogy that I like to use for exercise is that of a prescription, a dietary prescription versus an exercise prescription. They come from different, but very specific and detail, or and very uh, uh, very. Um, well-rounded uh, and well-defined uh, scientific areas. They both demand an initial evaluation, different ones, but uh, you all know what the uh, nutritional state evaluation means. It's not simple, and the same happens for physical fitness, for cardiorespiratory fitness, and for functional fitness, among other parameters that one can assess. Uh, it's not part of medical curricula in both cases. It, it's an individualized and personalized um, act, uh, and also it demands follow-up. and just by way of, uh, of, of, of illustration, both have their own program at the at DGS. So just to make the point that this prescription requires a specialized network of professionals. And we heard yesterday about uh, how Canada has organized their profession or the exercise professionals, uh, exercise profession, and how that has, been, has played out and ha how that has served the interests of Canadians, uh, even though it's not a simple matter, as Jonathan Faust told us yesterday. Um, and in Portugal, we are taking the same paths, we are taking the same steps, uh, and uh, by establishing a, a professional association that um, re helps regulate exercise professionals, we are uh, moving in that direction into establishing a specialized network of exercise professionals that can deal with the demands of today's society. And you've seen that yesterday from Rita Sancho Rocha presenting you uh, what an exercise physiologist is, what it does, uh, and what his role in society is. Uh, they're not the only ones that are trained to do an exercise prescription. And Rita Tomas showed us yesterday why we should think of also of, of sports medicine specialists also as uh, professionals that are already in the way to become, or some of them, if they have the experience of exercise prescription for health, they are already able to do it. Uh, and I can think of several of my colleagues which uh, probably could do uh, an exercise prescription as good or, or as good or better than, than most the best exercise physiologists. And these are some of them or some of the trainers of those specialists. And there are some of them uh, in different specialties from also from, from different specialties, such as primary care, have also this type of training. As Rita also said yesterday, Rita Tomas, um, you can see that the numbers of specialists in exercise uh, in, in sports medicine is uh, comparatively very, very small compared to other uh, specialties of medicine. And so uh, they will not be able to respond to the needs of society. Although uh, the idea is that we should work together. And I, I should say that society for, for, uh, for sports medicine in Portugal has been very supportive, not only of the national plan, 
uh, for physical activity, but also of the exercise of the professional association that it's been uh, it's now being established. So collaborative work and not uh, any type of other conflicts or rivalities that 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 don't have a bearing. So what is my definition of uh, exercise is medicine? To me, uh, it's meaning that exercise and physical activity are part of good medicine and uh, sound public health. That's what I. That's how I read it. I also read it in a way that leads me to believe that health professionals should counsel on physical activity and should uh, recommend whenever needed, whenever appropriate, that an exercise prescription is, is conducted and a follow-up is conducted. But primarily, uh, the point that I take out of this definition is that physical activity and physical exercise should be promoted in and through the health systems. Uh, that's the inspiration that I receive from exercises medicine. And as you know, the initiative exercises medicine is, is primarily focused on precisely this goal. So that's actually the topic of my presentation. That was just an introduction. Um, and um, what I will tell you now is uh, some aspects of the vision that uh, the National Physical Activity Promotion Program has, is building towards a, health, uh, a national health service that is more conducive, more uh, successful,